Hey, are you struggling because you feel stuck playing defensive style tennis, waiting for your opponent to make mistakes? Well, I've got good news for you. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to transition to more of a proactive style of playing tennis forcing your opponent to work for every point and forcing them to come up with great shots. And this is what's gonna get you to the next level because you're gonna make your opponent have to play even tougher to beat you. The real problem is this, by just going cross court when you're past that beginning stage, you pretty much become predictable. Your opponent isn't making as many mistakes and they know that same tactic too. They know that you're just waiting, sitting there for them to make a mistake. But the difference is they also probably know how to control the court. And this is where we're missing the boat. That balls land in a certain area of the court and we're not taking advantage of it. We're just going back cross court predictably because tennis is predicated on not making mistakes. So in the beginning when you're a 2-5 or 3-0, this is great advice. But where you start hitting a wall is when you start trying to go past that because you're like, hmm, this is so weird. Better players are doing more than just going cross court. So how could I do that to start being or beating more of those better players? So first thing I want you to recognize is that cross court is a defensive shot. It's a great shot because like we said before, tennis is based on not making mistakes. And so the cross court is the longest area for the court for us to hit into. It gives us the most margin. And so even if we're a little bit off, we will probably still make cross courts. And this is why it's not a offensive shot. When you're just starting off two, five, three, oh, even sometimes at the three, five level, what are you trying to do? You're trying to minimize your mistakes because most of your matches are won because you're making mistakes. And this is why the cross court adage holds true. But then once you start stepping up, maybe when you're getting to the beginning 3-5, starting 4 or 4-5, it just doesn't cut it as much. You become predictable. And those players that know how to deal with or manage the rest of the court start abusing you. Because guess what? As much as we all would like to think our cross courts always land cross court, they don't. But when you're only thinking cross court, that's what you see. You actually take away the most important part of the court, which is the center of the court, because you're thinking, regardless of where it lands, just go cross court. And this is not the best tactic if you want to start forcing your opponent to make mistakes. It's the best tactic if you want to be safe and not make mistakes. But if you want to start forcing your opponent and creating situations where they start making mistakes, where they start feeling pressure and you're stacking the pressure on, this is going cross court is just not going to cut it. The number one thing you want to start thinking about when you're in the middle is that you get to choose your matchups. This is so important. You get to choose the matchup you want. So if a ball lands in the middle and I'm running, I'm rallying cross court forehands and I want to keep it that way, keep going. But if you realize your opponent has a weakness on the backhand side, now I can change directions without taking as much risk if I had to do it in a cross court situation. And now the matchup's even better. I can use my forehand to their backhand and continue to make this matchup work by hurting them over and over again. The second thing is you can change directions without having to take more risk. If I'm in the cross court corner and I decide to change directions, I have a very small margin to hit into. But from the middle of the court, man, you have equal amounts on both sides. So I have still a ton of margin, still allowing me to change directions of the ball. The third reason is this. When I change directions of the ball, guess what I do to my opponent? I make them run. Now just think about something. Is it easier to hit a shot when you're standing still or is it easier to hit a shot when you're running? Obviously, it's much easier to hit a shot when you're standing still. So when you start moving your opponent and not take as much risk, guess what? You're forcing them to come up with better shots on a difficult situations, and that's how you start creating situations where they feel more pressure to come up with better shots. Because if they continue to hit balls in the middle, what are you gonna do? You're gonna run them. And that's why the center of the court is so, so important. So let's go do some drills to make sure you can start managing the middle of the court better, and you can execute running your opponent side to side without taking a ton of risk. Now, the very first drill I wanna do is set up where I'm just gonna work on changing directions from the ball landing in the middle of the court. Where I like to do this drill a little bit different is set up the ball machine where it's shooting the ball from a cross court position. So it gives you the right angle. There's one consideration I want you to make and think about. And this is personal preference and how you feel about speed and getting around the ball, which is which shot should I take to go to the open court? If I'm running over here and I'm off the court and I hit a good cross court, but my opponent winds up hitting a ball in the center from here, I can easily take my backhand and run them and then my next recovery position's over here. Now that's one option. I like this option a lot because truly, if I hit it from here, I don't have to do a lot of work moving. I can simply hit the ball here and run them and take advantage of them having run coast to coast and me having to take probably three, three steps. The other option is now if they're here, you can see how I had to move to get around the ball. I feel comfortable doing this because I've practiced this shot a lot. But really, I think you should practice doing both. Because what this does by running with my forehand, I'm already running to my recovery position. And then by the time I hit it, I'm already there. So it just depends on the situation. I recommend just setting up a ball machine and starting from here, I'm just gonna work on 
moving the ball to the other side, making sure that when I'm doing this, I'm not trying to go super close to the line and I'm not trying to kill the ball. I actually want my opponent to get the ball. I want them to kind of suffer having to run all the way to that side. And then the other side of this is that if they run over there, unless they hit another ball in the middle, then I could equally take this next ball and take it to the other side. This is why practicing the shot, whether it be from your forehand side like this and feeling comfortable, or even from the backhand side like this, it's really important because I'm gonna have equal opportunities to move up. They're gonna be in a world of hurt and that's what I want. So this is the first stage of just practicing this situation on both sides. Now on the backhand side, I tend to strongly favor my forehand for both situations. So what I mean by that, if I was in a cross court rally and then my opponent drops the ball in the middle of the court, then I'm gonna use my forehand here. Reason being is this. If I use my forehand to run them to the other side and they run me cross court, I have more distance on this side as a right-handed player. If you're left-handed, you're gonna probably wanna do what kind of Nadal does is basically flip this whole thing around to do it on that side. So now, if I was to hit my backhand cross court here and my opponent drops the ball in the middle of court, I wanna practice swinging them, taking their ball and simply running them to the opposite side, okay? And just get really good, comfortable running them to the opposite side. Now, when I do something like this, I still move over and I would recover just in case they hit the next ball further over. If not, and they hit another ball in the middle, then I could either use my backhand again from the middle or use my forehand to run them to the other side. And you can see how this starts to compound where your opponent starts to run side to side and they feel a lot of pressure. One more quick tip. I love this play and I wanna share it with you. I call it the track star play. And basically, you understand that basically if the ball's in the middle of court, you are gonna move them. Now, the other understanding is that we wanna still take that old adage that if the ball's in the corner, we're gonna hit cross court. So how this will work is this. If my opponent, per se, I hit a cross court backhand, they hit a ball in the middle just like this. And then I swing them to the other side. From here, I'm scooting over as they're running over to get that ball. But now, here's a really cool opportunity. If they decide to go down the line, well, guess what's gonna happen? I'm gonna go over here and take my backhand and run them back to the other side. Yay! If they go middle from that run, I'm gonna come around with my forehand, run them to the other side. Yay! The only time I'm not going to pretty much run them is if they get the ball cross court. Now, because they're moving, it's gonna be tougher to do that. And because that, I can keep forcing them unless they get it cross court. Now, even with the cross court, I'll just go back cross court and then hit a better cross court to get the ball in the middle of the court and make sure I do something with it. If they drop it short, I'm gonna approach and keep the pressure on. I'm not gonna back off the gas because once I throw a good knockout punch, I wanna stay on them and try to knock them out. I wanna know if you've used this tactic before, if you understand and you use the center of the court because it's so powerful. If you have, leave a comment below because I think it's so important to understand how to do this. The other half of what's important to how to do this is the footwork. And if you wanna know how to use your feet or how to get to the ball using good footwork to get there quickly to cover the court, make sure you go watch this video right here, okay? Take care.